Greetings Turians, Chaos here. In today's tutorial, I want to give you guys a look at how to build the reactor chambers uh, plasma tunnel puzzle in Harbinger. That was kind of a mouthful. <laughs> so basically, if you don't know what I'm talking about, in my Harbinger adventure map, towards the end, there is a reactor room that has an energy tunnel that you, the player, have to try and get across and uh, you have to dodge these energy beams, which will either push you back to the uh, tunnel entrance or kill you with fire damage. And I'm gonna be showing you guys how to build that today. So what we first have here is just kind of the engine area for the uh, tunnel. And this will just be an example size here. It doesn't need to be too large for my example. Um, I'm probably actually even gonna do shorter than that right there. And I'll just cut this off because we don't we don't need this to be overly long for my example. And then inside of this, we need to have two portal stations, one right here towards the entrance, and these will turn on the Hoik line that's going to be pushing you backwards, and then a second one to turn it off. Now the distance of the second one really, really, really changes how long the portal, uh, the, the beam is going to last and how long it's going to push back and cause damage for. So the greater the distance between these, the longer it's going to take for the uh, energy to leave the tunnel and the more it can push back or damage the player. And again, if you move these closer, the faster it'll be. And I'm just going to start with this for now. We'll see if that feels good later. And we might not even tweak it for this tutorial specifically. So I'm just going to hook those up to a five second timer. And it doesn't matter what color you pick for this. Uh, these will be off screen. I actually have them about 100 tiles below the surface, just so you don't hear it. So uh, right now, I'll turn it on and you'll see when they shoot it clicks a lot so we're gonna try and get rid of that clicking noise by placing it very far underground where players won't be able to hear it so they also won't be able to see it and so the color that you select doesn't really matter and I have a block here at the end to just disrupt the portal beams so they don't accidentally place a portal on any surface further off in the map so that's pretty much the engine done and we're just going to create the tunnel real quick. So this will be the exit and that will be the entrance. And it's important that we have this block here so that players can't run out of the tunnel. But it's also important that we have these gaps here so that we could have uh, portal beams coming through here to visually make it look like there's actually uh, something being fired through here. And we're going to knock out these two blocks and place blocks right here so that we don't get portals placed on the surface right here. They just kind of get disrupted in these little gaps. So using some hellstone brick, I'm just going to line the center of this tunnel. And I'm gonna throw some actuators on it. And just for the sake of hammering, I'm gonna leave them active for now. And I'm going to hammer them into this sloped position because this is the position that we need the slopes to be in in order to have a hoik that pushes players to the right. And now that we have all of these uh, sloped in the proper direction, we just need to wire them up to the pressure pads below. And I'm just going to start with the red wire and then I'll be alternating red and blue. And I actually do have an extra pressure pad down there, but that's okay, it's not a big deal. I just won't use it.
now that those are all wired up, I'm going to push all of these ones into the background because we want these to start off as actuated so that the player can safely walk into the tunnel and walk all the way across as long as there's not a beam firing. And as you see, I kind of floated through the block here and that's because I have this one here is uh, is actuated and at a slope so it's causing a hoik and allowing you to walk through that tile so if we just break that one off then we won't have that problem anymore and we could also break this one off at the end right here as well so again we got two other pressure pads down there that we don't need but no big deal so next up we just need to turn this on and you'll see that whenever these fire the row of hoik will turn on and turn off real quick and if I walk into it you'll see that it pushes me back towards the uh, entrance whenever it fires. It doesn't push for very long but that's because of the gap between uh, the two portal guns down here. If you want it to push for a longer time, again, you need to increase this distance. If you want it to push for a shorter time, you need to decrease that distance. I'm just going to turn this off for now. So next up, what we need to do is create a visual appearance for the, uh, the energy beams. And how we do that is we take a portal gun station and line it up with the engine below it. And this will launch a portal down the lower segment of the tunnel. But we also want one on the upper segment. We can't have one in the middle because it's just going to hit that hoik track and get destroyed anyway. So there's no point in building one. And normally I would furniture clip these so that they could be really, really close together. But since I'm showing you how to do this in game naturally, I'm just going to have to place it like this. My personal preference is to use the cyan color, so I'm going to go ahead and switch to that. I just like the way that it looks a little bit more. And we need to wire these cannons up with the 5 second timer that's connected to the engine. So now we have a visual appearance for the beam. So with how short the pushback is right now, it's okay to have one set of uh, portals sending a pulse through. It looks about the same length. You'll see the tail of the portal beam is about the same length as the Hoik track when it's actuated. But if you were to drastically increase the distance of this segment right here, like say I doubled it and I put this portal station right here to have a much longer pushback segment then you'll see that we end up with a, a beam an energy beam in the tunnel that's far too small for how long it's being pushed back so did I break that timer oops <laughs> So once I turn this on, you'll see the beam dissipates up here, but the Hoyt track stays on for quite a bit longer. So if you're going to have really, really long pushback, to kind of have it make sense, it also makes sense to have a second segment of uh, portal gun stations that kind of line up with how the beam's going to be. I'm just going to put it somewhere around the middle, probably about here. With the second row being right there. And since the first ones are cyan, these ones will be cyan as well. And we just wire these up with the timer. And now you'll see that the beam actually looks a lot more in line with how long it takes uh, for the actuators to turn on and back off. In fact, I could probably increase the length of that beam a little bit more by either adding an additional row of uh, portal gun stations or just pushing this row back a little bit further. So it takes some fine tweaking to get the visual to 
actually match up with how long it does the pushback. But I'm not going to go too much into that because that's something you'll need to toy around with in your adventure map. I'm just showing you how you could get it done. Next up, we need to punch a hole in the floor at every other tile. And I also end up doing this for the ceiling as well. Oops. And the reason why we're putting holes here is we're going to fill this in with some more hellstone brick so that when the player is being hoiked along the track, they're actually taking damage from the floor or if they're a little bit higher up on the track, they're taking damage from the ceiling because we want this to burn players as they're being carried backwards. If you don't want your players to be burned, you can skip this step entirely and you just don't use uh, Hellstone Brick. And we're also going to put actuators on all of these because we need for them to be in the background so that you don't get burned just for being in the tunnel. You see I'm on fire right now. We only want these to put you on fire whenever there's an energy pulse going through. And then we need to hook these up to the wires below for the top segment. And since we're doing every other line, they're all going to be uh, the blue wire in this case. The reason we need these to be every other line is if they were an entire row, the player would just fall through and it wouldn't quite work out for us. Uh, they wouldn't catch onto the Hoyt track and it's just not what we're after. So we also need to push these into the background because as I stated before, we don't want this to burn players unless an energy beam is passing through the tunnel. So now that I have this wired up and turn that on, you'll see that we have a track that whenever I get pushed back, I take some fire damage and every time a beam comes through here, it'll push me back. And since I uh, moved the line back a little bit further, it's actually pushing me back almost the entire length of the tunnel. There's just one other issue that we need to tackle for this to be complete. And you see if I create a safe pocket for our player right here in the middle, I'll just make it three wide and I'll just cap it off so you could visually see the safe pocket. We have a slight problem when it comes to uh, the Hoy track. And that's if you jump into the Hoy track while there's a beam in here, you won't get carried along. And I just need to actually time it right to show you. So you see that I'm actually standing on top of the hoik track instead of getting pushed backwards like that. So the problem is we need for this segment of hoik to not actuate whenever a player is above. So in order to do that, what we need is uh, we grab a, a logic sensor, a player above. I'm just going to step out of it for the time being. And we also need uh, logic end gates and two off lamps. Now you could put this logic gate anywhere that you want, off screen, hidden away. Uh, for the sake of simplicity in this example, I'm just going to put it right here. So we have an end gate with two off lamps on top of it. And the first thing that we're going to do is take some, I actually look like I'm going to be needing some more wires, so let me just grab that real quick. So you're going to take some uh, wire that's not red or blue, I'm just going to use green, and connect it to the logic sensor player above, and run it into one of the and or, or one of the off lamps. Next, we need to take this first line here, this blue line, at the beginning of the safe pocket and hook that up. And I really poorly timed it by hooking that up as soon as uh, the beam goes through. So you'll see that this lamp turns on whenever this Hoik track is activated. The next thing that we do is we hook up this yellow line 
to these three actuators below. So this Hoy track turns on whenever there's no player in here, and this lamp also turns on. This middle lamp turns on when there's a player in there, and turns off when there's a player not in there. If this lamp is on, and this lamp is on, this will activate, and these three uh, will not be actuated anymore, which will, as I could just show you real quick here, mean we have a gap in the system. So if I just fly, you can see these three don't actuate because I'm actually in the tunnel. But if I step out of the tunnel, you'll see that they turn on. But if I stand here, I get pushed back because I'm not actually triggering this sensor right where it's at. So now if I were to fall into this while it's active, if I could time it right, it's kind of short right now. There we go. If you fall into it, I'm no longer standing on top of it. I'm actually just getting pushed back. And that's how you basically deal with the issue of players being able to stand on top of the uh, pulse, the energy pulse. And that is actually the entire contraption done. So to recap, if you want the pushback to be longer, you need to increase the gap between this portal gun and this portal gun. It's quite long in Harbinger. And to fill in that gap visually, you'll need to use additional portal guns up above to just kind of add more space to the tunnel, add more glow to the tunnel to make it make more sense visually. You can make the tunnel as long or as short as you want by increasing this part of the segment in the engine. And any place that you have a player jumping out or jumping in, you'll want an area, uh, a little pushback safe area right here where it detects if the player's in the safe area or if the player's not. I just wanted to thank everybody for your continued patience with my channel. Uh, the past couple of weeks, I know I've been a little bit slower. I haven't been doing my three videos a week. Uh, due to my busy schedule and it's going to continue for a few more weeks longer but thank you all for sticking around i've actually been seeing a lot more growth on the channel lately so welcome to anybody who's just discovering the channel now i appreciate your guys continued support Thank you all very much for watching. I hope you found the tutorial useful. If you did find it useful, be sure to leave a like and a comment. And please consider subscribing to the channel. It helps out a lot. I'll catch you all later. Happy building.